So would you agree with me that building construction has changed in the last 20 years? If you haven't been paying attention, you need to go take a class from a gentleman by the name of Christopher Nalm or uh, my buddy James Johnson in, in Canada and learn about what's going on out there. There's more than five types of building construction now. And they're held together basically with popsicle sticks, glue, and staples. It's very lightweight. You're looking at uh, flammable components, synthetic contents, gusset plates, uh, laminate beams. It's a lot different than what it used to be. And even dimensional lumber is not dimensional lumber. If you look at a picture of a 2 by 4 now from a 2 by 4 50 years ago, the grain pattern is much wider. It burns faster. It actually fails just as fast as a lightweight construction OSB TGI engineered lamb beam does. Um, and also, your contents have changed. You don't have cotton uh, wrapped eight way hand tied oak couches in your house anymore. You have what we have in our house. We have a very lightweight OSB polyurethane coated wrapped cushion from IKEA furniture with a bunch of other synthetic components. That, by the way, one overstuffed chair is the same as five gallons of gasoline. That's what's in our homes now. And to combat this problem, rather than changing our tactics, even though all the research and data that's been shoved out in our faces, the fire service has responded with better gear. So we have extremely great gear that protects us to the nth degree. And as humanist Al Huxley says, what science has actually done is given us improved means to rather deteriorated ends. It's given us better ways to kill ourselves. Because now we have such armor, if you will, PPE, that allows us to go in further and deeper without feeling anything until it's too late. And we'll talk about that specifically. And unless you haven't been uh, paying attention in the last five to 10 years, research has proven that the fire growth is not necessarily hotter, but phenomenally faster. It used to say 15 to 20 times faster, the growth rate's faster than that now. They're still arguing over the calculations. And when you show up, you see fires such as this one in this picture, what's predominantly ventilation limited. What does that mean? It means that those high heat release rates, synthetic fuels inside of that home and the construction and the components of it have exhausted and used up all the oxygen. And it's this nasty, hot, thick, turbulent smoke waiting on one thing. And what do you think that is? We tell the public when they go to bed at night, close the door. When they leave a burning building, close the door. The fire service shows up, we kick every door and window out of it. And then it lights in our face and we wonder why, what happened. This is a ticking time bomb waiting on one thing air and that's all it needs so we have to understand that when i was taught 20 years ago that not to squirt that smoke will get me in trouble now because right inside that door is approximately 900 degrees so we can't just do that anymore we have to know what we're getting into and we have to cool it i'm not telling you not to be aggressive so don't anybody start getting all on their high horse anti uh interior firefighting stuff we are a big time interior fire firefighting we're known as intelligently aggressive so if you follow the old mantra, this is what I was taught. You see this couch and chair and carpet burning. I was taught to wait till I saw fire, not to open the nozzle till I felt heat, to not upset the thermal balance, to not steam the victim. So all these things I was taught to do. If I do that today, I'm in trouble. And do you think a victim that's laying in that floor is really concerned about 212 degrees of steam when that room reached temperatures of 1800 degrees plus? That's the average temperature of a flashover in a, in a room is 1,832 degrees. So you want to make sure that we're progressively cooling and making sure that we get rid of the heat because if you don't, you have to also consider that 1,200 parts per million of carbon monoxide, which is lethal, is in this, and 3,400 parts per million of hydrogen cyanide is in that room. And water will contract those gases and get that heat and those gases off that victim, whether you vent or not, it will make a difference. So these are the things that we have to understand that this enemy that we face today is a lot smarter, a lot meaner and a lot better than it used to be 20 years ago. We can't fight it like we used to. We have to use every ounce of technology and training and tactics we have because if we don't, we're going to continue to read these NIOSH reports where we see the same broken record repeated. Would you go do business with a contractor and let him or her in your home, and do work on your, your, your home, your house, where your family lives, if you knew for a fact that that contractor repeatedly made the same mistakes over and over again and never changed his or her behavior, would you do that? Well, that's what the fire service does because if you read NIOSH reports, we get these same broken record recommendations. And if you read the fines for what happened to these firefighters when they died, do you think $2,500 fine to the fire department or $1,200 fine to the fire department is 
significant enough to change their behavior? Is that worthy of a human life? No. So we've got to do a better job of that. We have to read these and understand how we can prevent them for our firefighters because the majority of people are not paying attention to them. And here's the things we fail to do. We fail to read fire behavior indicators and recognize those fire conditions. Because if you read these reports, you'll find out that firefighters didn't realize how severe it was until it was too late. And you can't read heat with the naked eye. You can read smoke, but you can't read temperature. And that's where this course comes in. You've read this probably dozens of times and heard it before. Ventilation, whether horizontal or vertical, must be coordinated with fire suppression. That's NIOSH code for we showed up as the fire department and made the fire worse. We, we have to t coordinate that. I'm not telling you not to vent or anti-vent or all the different argue, arguments you can get in and tactics with this. That's not what this class is about. This class is about you understanding your enemy and getting rid of the heat. And then you choose the appropriate tactic based on your training, your tactics, your technology, and the resources and staffing that you have. All right. You read in this, you also find that the firefighters found themselves between the fire and a ventilation point. Now, what does that sound like? A chimney. Those of you who were taught not to squirt smoke or cool smoke like I was 20 years ago, I challenge you with this statement if you still believe in that not upsetting the thermal balance, which I want you to erase the thermal balance, not upset it. Would you dress your family out, your spouse and your children, in turnout gear and air packs and have them crawl to the roof of a house and crawl down a chimney that has a burning fire in it and tell them not to open the nozzle until they see fire? If you say no, then ask yourself this, why would we do like this firefighter is doing in this picture with our leader camera here? Why would we crawl down this chimney and not open the nozzle till we see fire? Because that's what we were taught. Because in the 50s, we didn't want to disturb the thermal balance because they wanted to stay down low and breathe that fresh air. And they took that helmet off that had an eagle on it when they got to the first window and they broke that window out and they stuck their head out and took a deep breath. That's where the term smoke diver came from. And then they looked for the next window that they were going to do the same. That's why they didn't want to upset the thermal balance. And they had more time. You have 15 to 20 times less time to do that. And then the old cliche term that doesn't have to be on a NIOSH report. And I'm sure every one of you have probably had this happen. If you hadn't, you're probably not telling the truth because I know I have. You've had difficulty locating the fire. This is a problem we can remedy for most, most of the parts or most of the context. And that's by reading the heat and the conditions and the thermal cues of the building and the fire with the camera and using it as a diagnostic tool that aid us in our decision making, not replace it. So what you'll see in this is our fire suppression paradigm or the way we see things is not complete. I'm not telling you to throw out your fundamentals. I'm telling you to enhance them. You notice in this video I'm going to show you, you're going to see two firefighters attack this standard Connex box. Uh, being instructed by a Parisian fire brigade instructor on some different tactics. I'm not judging tactics here. I just want you to see what the camera sees versus what the human eye sees. We hadn't even got into the camera stuff yet. And you tell me if you think what we were doing here was sufficient enough to cool this environment. I want you to stop right here and look. You see nothing with the human eye other than smoke. And when you look inside of that Connex box with this diagnostic tool known as a thermal imaging camera that sees infrared energy, sees heat of surfaces and energy emitted from those surfaces, you see temperatures over a thousand degrees all around my two firefighters. They called me after this event and they said, you're not gonna be happy with us, but we got some really good video. I'm like. <clears throat> We like to say we do a lot of dumb things in the name of science. And this produced one of those videos because it shows you that we did not adequately cool the environment. My good friends overseas that are experts in gas cooling, I completely agree in their theology, so to speak. But the missing component of this is that we don't cool everything. We cool gases, but we forget the surfaces. And they're much better at it than we are. We'll talk about that later.